North Korea has s. Tolan millions in cryptocurrencies, spy agency reveals. It comes after experts revealed Kim Jong un could be making a fortune with Bitcoin's record breaking surges using North Korean hackers to circumvent the sanctions placed on the despotic regime as the dictatorship continues its nuclear weapons program. The pound 5.17 million, dollar 6.99 million, includes operations that saw thefts from Yapizen, now called Yabit, and Koyanis in April and September. Both are exchanges of cryptocurrencies. The chosen Ilbo, a South Korean newspaper, stated that the pound 5 million in cryptocurrencies are now worth a whopping pound 62 million, dollar 82.7 million. The paper refers to the South's National Intelligence Service, NIS, that revealed despot leader Kim Jong un also requested pound 4.1 million, dollar 5.5 million from Bai Thumb in return for personal information the country had stole from the exchange. North Korea has repeatedly denied it has been involved in international attacks, but it has made no secret of its interest in Bitcoin. Last month, the elite Pyongyang University touted a lecture from a Bitcoin expert as part of its cryptocurrency course. Federico Tenga, founder of Bitcoin startup, Chainsight, was approached by the university which is believed to be the breeding ground for North Korea's hackers. The university said, many excellent technical questions were asked about the inner working of Bitcoin, its risks, and the measures taken to ensure security. In June the rogue nation leaked information from 36,000 accounts from Bai Thumb, the exchange is renowned for being the busiest in the world. The Hermit Kingdom attempted another desperate cyber attack on an estimated 10 cryptocurrency exchanges in October but was denied by the South South Korean Internet Security Agency, KISA. North Korean hackers attempted to use emails containing malware in the attempted act, these contained internet addresses in the Hermit Kingdom. Following the failed attack by Kim Jong-un, the NIST discovered that the malware was the same as used in the hacking of Sony Pictures in 2014 and the Central Bank of Bangladesh in 2016. A hacker group named the Guardians of Peace GOP, demanded that Sony Pictures pull the release of its film, The Interview, and released confidential data from employees at the studio and copies of then unreleased films in November 2014. The GOP then used a type of malware named Shame and Wiper to erase computer infrastructure at Sony. The interview was a film starring James Franco and Seth Rogen that saw the duo plot to assassinate Kim Jong-un. North Korea has long persisted with its use of cyber attacks, the country appears to be harnessing online tactics with increased regularity in a desperate scramble for finance a move that could be related to the increased economic squeeze being put on the country by nations around the globe. In an exclusive interview with Express.co.uk, CNN military analyst Cedric Leiden warned that North Korea has the potential to be very damaging to a lot of countries from its tactics employed in the cyber realm. He declared, in Great Britain, the NHS attack was a clear indication that a country like North Korea could target the critical infrastructure of a country on the other side of the world and it affected people's daily lives. I think we need to be very careful with North Korean offensive cyber capabilities and this points to a very interesting development in warfare. I think they also understand and have made very good use of the whole cyber domain and what's interesting about this is it doesn't really take that much in terms of material and resources and frankly personnel as long as you have the right kind and they have a degree of training that makes them effective as hackers. They can be very, very damaging to a lot of countries that have a much more highly developed internet connectivity than North Korea itself does. The big irony is that North Korea's general population has very limited access to the Internet or Internet-like intranets that are developed in North Korea itself. But that has not prevented Pyongyang from developing a robust intelligence-gathering effort as well as offensive capability under the reconnaissance of what they call their Reconnaissance General Bureau which is their main intelligence service and that effort has proven to be very potent.